Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing very well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full in-depth review on my Jaguar D-Type, the 1955 Le Mans 24-hour winner. Um, so it's complete with the Le Mans livery on it. So you've got the Le Mans stickers and it's finished in a very nice, I think it's British racing green, which absolutely suits the model. Um, this is a Ottawa signature model. So it comes with the certificate of authenticity which i've got here now if you've been subscribed for a while you know that i like to display the certificates behind the models in the cabinet so it's always a nice touch that the auto art signature models um come with the certificate and then it also comes with a booklet in regards to um, how the model was made and um, how many parts it took to build the model and on the d-type it's got around 400 separate metal and plastic parts um, and it's a fully open in die cast models as you guys can um, can see i've left everything open to start off with so i'll be doing a full review on the interior first and then i'll close everything up and then i'll do a review on the exterior but it's one that i've had my eye on for a while now um, a couple of comments on the unboxing video is kind of why you're buying Le Mans cars you know when your collection is predominantly supercar and hypercars um, I've got my eyes on a couple of Le Mans cars a couple of um, FIA GT cars like the um, FIA winning MC12 that Auto are also made in different um, different liveries which I've um, I love to add to the collection you know I've got the the MC12 road car in um, in white and blue so having a, um, a race version alongside that would look quite cool in the cabinet um, but I think the, the main issue, um, obviously, in regard to that, these prices for the models have have absolutely skyrocketed since is, is finding them. I haven't actually found, not even on eBay, a um, an FIA MC12 in really good condition. So I'm definitely keeping an eye out. This one came up about last week and I thought, uh, you know, I, I, why not absolutely go for it? It's in a really good condition and um, it comes with everything as well. So it comes with the instruction manual on how to open up everything on the model um, because even though most things are open on the model you've got other little things like the fuel filler caps on both sides as well which opens up and i'll show you guys all of that detail um, but let's take a look i suppose at the engine bay first and uh, so if i spin the model around and i'll show you guys a bit more of this stunning engine bay now the whole uh, front clamp opens up, so you've got the hinges at the front end of the model, um, and also you've got the leather straps, as you guys can see, down the side here, which you can buckle up onto the body, um, and you've also got the chrome handles here, which is a nice theme. All the handles on the model have finished, you know, are finished in um, in, in chrome, and then you can see the little latches there that latch the um, the bonnet to the um, to the body of the model quite nicely. But as always on Auto Art Signature models, they do a great job on the um, on the engine. So if I just bring my camera in here, just to show you guys a bit more of that detail. We're in there and you can absolutely see all of the, of the detail that the Auto Art have, um, have gone to. Now, as I say, the Auto Art Signature series always do a great job with their engine details. So on the D-Type, it's a straight six um, and it's running around, I think, maybe 270, 280 brake horsepower. And um, you can kind of see all of the in the wires, the reservoirs, um, lots of engine detail in there too. It is got um, it has got full working suspension as well. Um, so you press down on the model, you can see the um, the springs compress all round. You can see the rather large radiators right at the front end of the model. Obviously, this one being the racing spec um, has an in probably an upgraded or improved engine bay, which means an upgraded cooling system as well. Then you can also see the um, the mesh on the um, on the front there as well, which I'll show you guys shortly. On the other side, you can see that I flicked up the um, the fuel filler cap, so that is a, um, a a hinge on that fuel filler cap which you can open up, which is again a nice touch. Um, you know, it's just an extra level that also our signature go to, um, and they do do a great job with all of their little details. Um, it reminds me a little bit of kind of the um, the Zondas. I mean, the the Zonda detail there is. Um, is exceptional and this kind of does match it as well um i know the zonda also had kind of leather straps as well which you can tie down the um the engine compartment um and again on some of the bbr diecast models they also have the option to um lift up the fuel filler cap 
But as I say, the engine detail is absolutely superb. You can pretty much see every single component very clearly, and um, it does look really nice having it displayed with the whole front clam up. Um, I think if I bring this model round again so you guys can see the other side, it is really highly detailed. As again, you can properly see that straight six. And as I say, they always do a really good job replicating engine details or to what signature models um, and you've got two fuel filler caps on this so obviously the one on the engine compartment is here and then you've got the other one in the rather large fin on um, just behind the driver which i'll show you guys that as well that one as i said i've just flipped that one up now so that one is exposed and then they've also exposed the one at the front as well so if i um use the tool that the model car comes with so it comes with this rather um, convenient opening tool to open um, all the compartments up because it is quite fiddly so if I just flick the um, the cap back like that and then we can close down the front clam like that uh, I haven't buckled up the lever straps but you can you can do that as I say then you can also just clam it, um, lock it in with the um, with the clams on either side as well, um, just to buckle it into the um, the body of the model. Now I've also uh, unlatched the passenger compartment. Now this can be quite fiddly, but the, with with the tool that it comes with, make sure if you're looking for one of these, it comes with the opening tool, just because it's really really handy to, as I say, open up all of the compartments. You have to um, push the um, little lever forward. And then with the hook on the um, on the opening tool, you hook it underneath and then you kind of lift it up slowly. Um, so it does make your life a lot easier to have it with the um, with the tool. So I know these models have been around for a long time. And um, so sometimes they might not come with them um, with with the opening tool. So once that's unbuckled and um, and lifted off, you can see some detail in there. It's, it's quite minimal. So you can see the the handbrake um, in there, too. You've got the um, the gear stick also on the left-hand side of the driver. Um, but again, as, as it is a racing car, it hasn't actually got that much detail in there. I suppose it's a very minimalistic design. Um, you know, it's just very, very bare in there at all. So I can't even see a seatbelt um, attached to the seats anywhere. Um, but as I say, a racing car, it is what it is. Um, what they've done in there anyway, it does look quite good. Um, so again, after you've lifted it up, you can see some some detail in there. If I come round to the driver's side, slightly more detail here. So you can see all of the dials um, just behind the steering wheel there. Really nice finish on that steering wheel. It does give a good replica of that wood steering wheel. You can see the shifter just in the middle there between the driver and the passenger. Um, and then you've also got the pedals down there as well. Um, again, really good finish. Um, I do like the cockpit design. Um, I think it does look, um, you know, the styling of the D-Type is also really, really nice. I mean, just the way the the whole car is really styled. Um, it does, with that fin as well, it does look really good. Um, so if I just put my camera back down again, we'll put the um, passenger compartment back in place, which again is quite easy to do. It's not too bad. Um, it is a die cast metal piece, but you've got the um, the two hooks there on either side. So you can kind of just slot it back in to position. Like that. And then you just push this back into place. And then the clip forward, like that. And then you put the um, the passenger cover back in place. And if I spin the model round again, we'll close the driver side door and then we'll look over to the second fuel filler cap just on the back of the fin here. Now again, you can lift up the, um, the fuel filler cap like I did in the front end of the engine compartment. Um, but again, it is quite tight there as well. So again, it's another nice touch to all to what I've done. They've left the fuel filler cap exposed and, and the cover. Um, but we can close this back up now just to show you guys it's it kind of locks clicks back into place there you go 
notes. Um, so it is quite good at everything that you kind of open up and, and close. It doesn't feel like you're breaking anything because everything clicks and unclicks um, into place. Now on the rear end of the model, now this could be quite fiddly to open. Um, I'm the um, the lever for the um, for the rear compartment of the model actually turns, and as you turn, it actually unlocks the um, the catch here. So you have to turn the lever and then pull it out to um, to open up the um, the rear compartment. But then once you've done that, you've got the well, as you guys can see, you've got the spare wheel in there which again is a nice touch. You've got really nice um, hinges on the um, on the rear as well with the exposed screws and then you've got the um, the wires as well connecting the um, the body to the rear compartment. But again, the whole design, um, style, and it's just really nice from, from auto art, really realistic. And to close this back in again, you have to use the, um, the handle. So you can push this back in and then you have to turn the handle to lock it back into place. So the handle is actually um, functional. It has a purpose. It's not there just for for show. It actually controls the buckle on the other side to lock it back into place. Because if you leave it um, upwards, then it just kind of flops back down again. So um, yeah, it's really nice design there from, from AutoArt. So now that we've had a look at the interior of the model, let's do a review of the exterior, starting off at the front end of the model. Now again, it's kind of minimalistic design. There's not too much going on on the car. Um, I think they've kept it very, very simple on, on the model as well. And I think the styling overall is, is great. You know, definitely one of the reasons why I actually bought the model. I think the D-Type, again, not just because it's iconic, um, I think it is probably one of the best kind of British styled cars um you know it does look absolutely kind of beautiful just in the way the whole body is designed uh, but starting off at the front end of the model you notice a common theme throughout with all of these exposed silver rivets so you've got the rivets around the front headlights you've got them around kind of the driver zone um i think they're probably just to hold down different compartments of the model as this being a um a 50s car um, but I, I think it, you know, it looks great and it gives the um, the model and the car character um, and it just gives it an extra kind of style that you don't see um, often or, or at all nowadays anyway. But at the front end of the model, you've got the number plate just on the driver's side. Um, again, quite an iconic, you know, you, you've seen that on, on the real car as well, which I do like. You've got a couple of air intakes at the front as well. Then you've got the white lip around the um, around the front end of the model, and then you've got the Jaguar badge as well with the um, Le Mans Six all around the um, the model as well. You've got the uh, grills over the um, over the front compartment there, obviously just for the better cooling. But I do like the whole structure of the front end of the model. I think it does look great um, with the front headlights. I think that it just looks amazing and definitely one of the um, the D types best angles. Coming around the side end of the model, it's quite a small car um, for 118 scale, but it has got a lot of weight to it as well. So it's um, quite deceiving in terms of weight to size. Um, but also, again, great job with the uh, with the exterior of the model. Um, the wheels, you can't see too much detail, so you can't see any. Um, I'm not sure if this had a calipers or discs, um, but again that. That is pretty much all you can see in terms of wheel design and tire design, um, but again, it is quite good, and they have left um, some more touches on the um, on the wheels as well, or to art. But again, it does look the part; it looks very realistic, um, and I think it just suits the um, the model very, very well. Now, once you've put the passenger compartment on, all of the shut lines are very nice and neat um, around all of the different opening compartments. You know, this is a as a, as you guys have seen a fully open in model car so all of the shut lines are very neat and tidy once everything is is closed up again and um, but coming around the rear end of the model again the rear wheels are done exactly the same as the front very nice look very realistic um coming around the rear end of the model um, it's probably the most iconic bit of the whole car is this elongated fin i suppose for better aerodynamics um, but it really did give that d-type the um the iconic look and it's iconic styling 
um, again, which is a feature which I absolutely love on the um, on the model. And as you guys can see, the rivets continue around the rear of the model as well, obviously just to hold down the rear compartment. Um, but you've got the boot um, as well, got a really good number plate in terms of just a sticker. And you've got the exhaust pipes just underneath as well. You've got the rear lights as well, because I believe this is a road car as well, um, guessing with the, um, with the number plates on. But again, it does look really nice, and obviously all of the chrome touches around the um, around the lights and around the handles all look really nice as well. So it all ties in very, very nicely. And then coming around the driver's side, um, again, you the the door does open on the driver's side, but not on the passenger side. But again, as you say, really nice detail, and all of the rivets continue more so around the driver's side than the passenger side but it does look really realistic and, and really nice. And the whole paint application on the model is good with the iconic racing green. Um, and again, I mean, I know this is definitely an anomaly in the collection in terms of I don't really collect racing cars or Le Mans cars at all, but it's definitely something that I'm looking into. I'm not looking to start a whole Le Mans and FIA collection. I'm looking just to pick out some of the more iconic or more significant cars from the Le Mans era and from the FIA GT era as well. So I thought this one, being a Le Mans winner, um, really iconic car. I've, I've always loved the, um, the look of the D-Type and um, I'm just glad that I managed to get one for the right price in, the, in really good condition off eBay that I can add to the auto art collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, um, the review of the D-Type. Definitely would recommend getting one for your collection. Um, just make sure it definitely comes with the opening tool and the manual just so you guys know how to open up all of the different compartments definitely makes your life easier but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if i had to give this a review out of 10 i'll probably give it a maybe an eight and a half nine out of ten looks absolutely um flawless in terms of the presence of the model um i think auto i've done a really really good job and i would recommend one um, so if you like the video, please like, please subscribe, please share, and I'll see you guys all very, very soon for lots more videos to come. Take care. Bye.